Hello boys and girls and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about our tools. Yes, I'm so excited. So yeah, tools, man. Oh, look, an airplane. So they can have this airplane and oh, look, it's a wonderful airplane. It's a beautiful airplane. But, you know, there's a screw loose on it. Oh, if I, o I, 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 if I only had a tool to fix it, I could, I could tighten the screw to keep the whatever from falling off the watsits. So we have tools. We have a lot of tools. And if you look in the basic uh, uh, <clears throat> A&P's uh, toolbox, it is a plethora of gizmos and gadgets and everything you could think of. And you know what? It's never enough. Never enough. It is never, ever enough. You can never have too many tools. Don't even try to front on me and just say, oh, you've got enough tools. No, I don't. I don't have enough tools. And how dare you suggest that I do? What's wrong with you? Oh, my God. Get with it. Are you, have you gone all day without coffee? You call yourself a mechanic and you say, oh, I've got enough tools. No, you don't. That, that, that's sacrilege, man. What are you talking about? That's just, it's just, I, it's just, I don't know how to cope. Don't know how to cope with people that have that attitude. I don't know. So let's go look at my toolbox. Now, admittedly, it's a work in progress. Don't complain in the comments. Because you know there's always this snap-on guy driving around in his fancy truck. Oh, look, I have this new thing that you need. And it's shiny. And it's new. And it costs more than last year's dental work. And he's not alone. There's the Mac guy. Oh, look at this thing that I have. And it's wonderful. And it's cheaper but it still costs just as much as last year's dental work. Right? So let's go take a look. The place from where all tools are stored, collected, nurtured, even curated, is the toolbox. The toolbox. They're very important. It's where you keep your tools. And as I mentioned before, there's always a Mac guy and a Snap-on guy that is going to do their best to sell you a toolbox. They will try. And sooner or later, you will get one from them, guaranteed. If you're just starting out, don't get one from those guys. Go to uh, my first choice. My the first place you go to for a toolbox is Craigslist. I got this thing off Craigslist. It stores everything I need for routine and some not routine uh, maintenance for GA aircraft. <clears throat> you know, uh, everything, I mean literally everything. It's in this little tiny box. You don't need something that you can see from space. A friend of mine, Dave, has this ginormous, gorgeous toolbox from Snap-on, but I literally, it, it is so long, you can sleep on it as a bed. I told him he just needs to put runway stripes right down the middle. <laughs> you know, it is huge. For me, I don't, that's just not something I can use because something that long is very difficult to maneuver around a tightly packed uh, hanger. So your toolbox tends to stay off in a corner and you go run back and forth, back and, back and forth, back and forth to get tools. This one, I can wheel just about anywhere. It's got a nice working surface. So yeah, Craigslist, $800. I think this thing was regularly uh, six, seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800 off a truck. It is. All the drawers you need. Nice little stuff to put all your your your, um, your gizmos and gadgets. Here I've got, you know, magnets for when I drop shit. I've got flashlights so I can find the things that I dropped. I've got mirrors to better help me locate the things that I dropped with my flashlight and my uh, magnet. And I've got like claws to help grip the things I drop down into an engine once I find them, little rascals. I've also got all the measurement stuff, you know, calipers, more calipers, digital calipers, manual calipers, vernier power calipers, all sorts of calipers. Notes. 
to the number of aircraft specialty tools. But most importantly in here is safety glasses. If you do not have safety glasses, you are really not a real mechanic. Let me tell you, seriously, wear your safety glasses. Always wear your safety glasses. Oh, it's just taking out the, the cotter pin. No, so wear your safety glasses. Oh, but I'm just un taking the screws out of the cowl. No, 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 wear your safety glasses. Always. Just because you never know what, it's just, I'm just going to drain the sun. No, safety glasses. It's when you start digging things out of the plastic of these safety glasses, you know how important they are. You don't want to be wearing, you don't want to think about wearing them after you're on your way to the hospital, have your eye put back in, where your cornea scratched. Don't do it. Wear safety glasses. Sockets and socket paraphernalia. Sockets. Gotta love them. Gotta have them. For small GA aircraft, beach, Cessna, Luscom, you really just need a set of six point. You don't need the 12 point. You really have to have the 12 point if you're working on bigger aircraft, turbojets, jets, regional uh, jets, because those bolt heads are 12 point and a six point just won't cut it. But for older aircraft, six point's just fine. Uh, if you need 12, if there's uh, some point in time you need 12 point, go out and get it. But you don't have to have it if you're building off your uh, first kit. They're absolutely fine. Snap-on makes it has a new line called the FDX line. They're specially uh, engineered and manufactured to get on problematic bolt heads. And they're, they're great. They're, they're great unless you're dealing with a uh, close tolerance uh, bolt heads, and then they may not even fit. Close tolerant bolt heads in the FDX line really don't go well together. I, every time I have a job that has uh, involves um, close tolerant bolts, I have to go back to you know some other uh, socket to get it off because it's just it's just the uh, the FDX is too precision made, and the close tolerant bolts are just this. And if there's any uh, deviation of the bolt head, it's just the socket's not going to go. When you're buying your sockets, get every size they make and whatever. Uh, mostly I use uh, quarter inch sockets. That, that's where I have my widest variety. Um, sometimes you'll need to get, you know, go up to a three eighths. You know, get some larger sockets will require three eighths to get the bigger sizes. But in general, you're just looking at a quarter inch. So if you have to start someplace, start with a quarter inch uh, drive set. That's where you should spend most of your money first. Now you're gonna to have to get three-eighth stuff later on down the road, and you're probably gonna to have to get a uh, half inch for some applications on down the road. Most of those applications in GA are gonna be the uh, axle nuts. Don't use channel locks. Please don't use channel locks on axle nuts. Get a socket, because please. Over time, those axle nuts have been had so many people cranking on them with uh, with channel locks that they've become beat up, abused, hard to get on, hard to get off. Do yourself a favor and the next mechanic in line, get a large socket. Go down to Lowe's or whatever, and just get one that fits. You know, you only need like three or four, I believe, and that covers 99% of GA. When you're also you're going to need in sockets, you're going to need this one. This one is very, very important. This is a 3 8 drive, 7 8 socket. This is your spark plug socket. Works on most of GA. And don't, don't go out and just get a deep 7 8 because it won't fit. The, it will not be able to get all the way on to your spark plugs. The spark plugs are made so differently. Like I've got, you know, deeps, but the interior construction of most deeps or their Craftsman, Mac, Snap-on, Cobalt, whoever, will not get all the way on a spark plug. Seven eight drives, I got mine from a Aircraft Tool Supply. They make one just for spark plugs. You gotta get it, have to get it. Must have. Another thing I think it's a must have in sockets are crow feet. So many times you're up in something and you got to do something a quarter turn and you can't get anything else on there. 
you got to go for a crow foot. And if you get all the sizes, you're going to need, it's going to be quarter, starts out at the low end, it's going to start out with a quarter inch, all the way up to a three eighths inch drive. Then, of course, you're going to have a rail full of knickknacks. Knickknacks being extensions, odd size stuff, hose, clamp, sockets, just everything you manage, just, just fill a rail full of just miscellaneous knickknacks. Today on this episode of As the Wrench Turns. Wrenches, not a lot of variety. There are three main types. Basic wrench, boys and girls. Basic wrench. 12 point combo. There it is. Get as many sizes as you can afford. Smallest all the way up to an inch. You'll need an inch eventually. You're gonna need a set of stubbies because there's a lot of times there's not a lot of room to get you and your big fat wrist in one of these engine uh, bays. Just get a short set of stubbies. And usually they go up, you can find them up to about seven eighths. From very, very small all the way up to seven eighths. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, instead of getting the really expensive uh, stubbies in this listed in the catalog as a stubby, get a, a set of ignition wrenches if they still th sell those. Get your pair, and that's dirt cheap. Then there's all sorts of hybrids. There's the stubby with a ratcheting combo wrench. Now, that's fancy, right? Sometimes you can get in there, but you can't get the, it's a lot of effort to get it off, and ratcheting can save your life. That'd be cool. Very cool to have. And then the ultimate hybrid is the combo wrench. That's ratcheting. It also has a flexible head. Look at that, isn't that amazing? It locks in place, and you ratchet away, ratchet away. Some of these are really well built, some are horrible. I have a, a set of uh, Craftsmen that were this just... Whenever I talk about this, that, those Craftsman wrenches, my therapist tells me to go to my happy place. Blackhawk from Mac. Very good. Dirt cheap. Very good. Very good. Because once that pin locks in, there's a little, little tiny pin. When that locks in to the head, it's just not going. Things with handles. Screwdrivers. Man, you're always going to be using screwdrivers. There's just absolutely no way around it. <clears throat> this one. This is just a snap-on ratcheting screwdriver. Bought this thing in like 19... 89, I think. The number's not even the parts catalog. They got others just like it, but this thing is held up and held up and held up and it's still going strong. I replaced the bits. Not that the bits wore out because I lost them. One is in a washing machine I previously owned and I don't even know what happened. I took the washing machine apart and the bit, it just, I don't know why, it's just gone. I'll always rue that. But the one of these, this is a very good deal. It'll last you forever. Conversely, you're going to need a stubby screwdriver. This was kind of cool. This is from Milwaukee, and I'm very impressed with the quality of this. This is just a stubby ratcheting screwdriver. It's got all little different types of bits built in the handle. It goes in my back pocket. Use it for a lot of stuff. Between this and the other one, that's 90% of what I uh, 90% of what I use. This one, unless you're getting up into a King Air area, you won't need it, but there's uh, this one. With this cool little head, this fits perfectly for King Air cowling. That's the reason, only reason I have it is for King Air cowlings. Uh, another different type of screwdriver, regular standard, won't exactly fit because King Airs have that rounded edge that needs to be paid attention to or you'll just end up stripping out the head and you're going to need awls and picks there's not much to a pick you know what it is you've used them before get your good set of them all same thing make sure these are thick and, and well built because you don't want to break one of these off yes in the, in the, in the, in the, on it says warning not a prior bar or punch not a pry bar or punch. It is an all. It's not a pry bar and it's not a punch.
painty things. A lot of things you're gonna to need to snip, cut, grab. So you're gonna need pliers, and you're gonna need a lot of different types. <clears throat> Good set of needle nose will take you a long way. Make sure they're very well built because you don't want it has to have a really good grabby in. You don't want it to slip because usually when you get these things in a, in a tight compartment and on there finally, you want to make sure it comes off. Not this off of the uh, bolt or whatever, but you want to take, make sure the part comes off of the airframe. Found these are very good for getting in places where you just can't. You see the advantage to get this. You can maybe not be able to get it in there. So these pistol grip pliers are very, very cool. You just get right up in there and just get on and just give it a little twist. To get. These are very good for getting something started. Then you use more conventional methods for getting the, 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 uh, the contraption off. If you've got to cut uh, wiring or cotter pins, this is from Snap-on, and I'm pitching this tool exactly. The hinge point is very far from the handle, so you get a lot of leverage. You can put a lot of force right here and snip off anything that you need. But this isn't more or less for tire ups. Think cotter pins and things like that. This from Nipix. This, this is the Shiznot right here. This. When you're using tie wraps, how many of you have been digging around and you just rip open an artery on a, 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 a mal-snipped uh, tie wrap? Kids, please, love of God, do yourself a favor. Do the next mechanic a favor. When you put in a tie wrap, clip it off, not at an angle, not at just a quarter inch off of the, uh, the uh, clip itself, Use one of these Nipix. They're very, very sharp, and they're very, very useful. Get right up into the edge of the clip and cut right off at the base with these. These will cut it right off the base and snip the tie wrap completely. At least no ganglet, no sharp edge. You won't need, you know, if you're using these consistently, and everyone's using these consistently, maybe we can get rid of Band-Aids. Maybe we can make Band-Aids a thing of the past if we use these. All shapes, all sizes. Another Nipix product. I think I've already bitched about uh, channel locks. The cool thing about these is you can set the width here, but as you open and close the mechanism, note that these two planes, these two edges of the tool, always remain parallel. Look at that, parallel. Isn't that amazing? And if you want to change the width of it, you just press the button, move the teeth in, or move it up, and lock it back in place. This little button right here, see? And then it's, there's the, 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 these two edges that do the grasping, they're parallel. They're not gnarled, they're not biting in, they're into the uh, nut, they're not gouging and tearing away the metal. No, they're actually doing, it's parallel, and it's a miracle. Buy a full set. Get these off Amazon. Not cheap, but they're cheaper than the nuts you will replace that you damage with uh, channel locks. We will cover overthinking safety wire in another video, but the thing you absolutely must have day one on your journey to be an AMP, or if you, or today, if you're an AMP and you've chinsed out on your uh, safety wire pliers, go out and get a real pair. Got these off a Mack truck 30 years. I had a pair of these just like off a Mack truck 30 years ago. They were worn, they weren't going anywhere, they were just, they wouldn't grip, they wouldn't lock. And Mack said, oh yeah, just bring it in. We'll swap it right out. And they, they're expensive, these, these things can run a lot of money. But for the love of God, get you a good, not a decent, decent's not going to cut it, good pair, safety wire pliers.
got to have a good pair of safety guard flyers. Always. Right off the bat. Don't. That's just good pair. If you don't have vice grips, you're not getting the job done. Sorry. You're just not. Vice grips are your best friend. If you don't have vice grips, what are you doing with your life? Vice grips. You've all seen them. These aren't even mine. <laughs> I just, I think these are Drew's. These, these are not mine. Drew, I'll bring you your vice grips today. Don't worry. Let me get a pair of my vice grips, because God knows I've got a whole drawer full of just vice grips. All sizes, the needle knows the big ones, the small ones, they're all vice grips. And that's how I know that was not mine, is when I have, my, all my vice grips are made by Irwin. They're branded vice grips. That was a cobalt product. I'm sure it's wonderful, but as much pressure as I, and th crap that I, and much hard abuse that I put these things through, the other ones just die on me. They break, the spring breaks, the mechanism breaks, or wears out, or just, so I've just gotten to the point, I'm just always buying Irwin vice grips. I never buy the plastic handle ones, I always just get the steel, because the plastic going, I destroy the plastic, I must be the roughest person on vice grips ever. I, I don't know why. And they come in a variety of sizes and shapes for every kind of application. You can never go wrong with vice grips. And for the, the people that have a mechanic in their life, just buy them any random pair of vice grips. They will love you forever because you can never have too many vice grips. Shopping tip. In that little box is a lot of money. And y'all know what kind of money I'm talking about. Because it's got snap-on emblazoned on the lid. You see that? Snap-on. Yeah. Boys and girls, let's face it, you're going to need a torque wrench. Do not, under any circumstances, any circumstances, punk out on your torque wrench. Don't get one where the little mechanical needle sway. No, throw that shit away. Do not get one. These things are hideously expensive, five to six hundred dollars. They do come in a lot of colors. When you're torquing down spark plugs into a cylinder, you have to, have to make sure that it's right. You have to make sure that the torque is right. You do not want to under torque, don't want to under torque. And you sure as the world is round, you do not want to over torque these spark plugs. There's lots of things you have to torque down on an airplane, you know. But, you know, putting 10 extra pounds on like a uh, engine mount bushing, probably won't do the kind of damage that over torquing a spark plug will bring you. This one is digital. You uh, get it calibrated once a year. There's probably some place in, in your town that can uh, calibrate this thing, no problem. They're expensive, hideously expensive. You may not get it off, be able to get it on your first paycheck, but don't waste your money on a cheap one. Save up and get a good one. It'll last you forever, do not cheap out because if you over torque a spark plug in a cylinder probably it's going to cost more to repair that cylinder than you're going to make in a month get a good one i personally hate inspection panels i really do i hate inspection panels of all the things you have to deal with in aviation man inspection panels is my number one so i try to find the uh, silver lining in all things i found a silver lining in inspection panels the power drill with a screwdriver bit. Now you just don't want to get any one. You don't want to get a skinny one. You, don't get, you want to get a heavy one. You want to get one that's got manly stamped all over it. You know, because the thing about it, you got a twin come in, right? You take all the fairings and the, and the inspection panels off and, and that's like a thousand screws. All day. And once this arm gets tired, right after three hours of that, you go to this arm. And after a while, your biceps are bricks, man. You do inspection panels for a month, and, and you're going to see really awesome changes in your arms. So 
So always get the heaviest cordless power drill you can find. True story. Tools. Tools, man. Because tools. We all need tools. We love our tools. We love them. We got to have them. We dream about tools in our sleep. There have been TV shows just about tools. And again, just let me reiterate, you know, if you're first starting out, you don't need to go on Snap-on, get a $20,000 line of credit, go to Craigslist, get you a good box. You can get a good Mac or Snap-on box there. They're really high quality for next to nothing. You don't need a big one. Start small and work your way up. You can go to, um, except for the things that I mentioned in this video, things you absolutely have to have, in my opinion, just go get you a set from you know, uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or something. Cobalt brand's great. DeWalt brand's great. They're all owned by, I think, there's only like two real tool companies that has all the brands. But just go get those. Start out small and work your way up. Do not spend a ton of money on tools. You do not need to. You know, I told you the things you need to splurge on. Splurge on those. Everything else, just take the economy way up, you know? Build your set over time. You do not have to have all this going into it. You do have to have a set of tools, but you don't have to have $30,000 in tools. And don't let anybody tell you that yeah, you do. And that's about it on the subject of tools from the Take Flight Hangar here in Shafter, California. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, love it, share it. Tell all your friends about it. Just think about this. It's actually something you could talk about over Thanksgiving. And above all, please, you folks, Fly safe. Please fly safe. <laughs>